Hi, okay, well, let's get started. Um, Larry, what came first, your journalism career or your social media presence? The journalism career kind of enabled the social media presence, but I guess at this point they're really married into each other that it's hard to tell them apart. And I've enjoyed them being in that way for as long as I can remember. What, give us an idea of your following across social media platforms. One doesn't do these things, Michelle. It's like picking your favorite child. So it's a strange thing. <laughs> it's a strange thing because I've got about, I think, 1.8 million or so on Twitter, 1.8 million followers, um, over a million Instagram and Facebook. And it all kind of grew so fast. I remember when I started, I joined Twitter 11 years ago today. Can you imagine that? Wow. 11 years ago. And for a while, I didn't have any followers. I'm just like, I'm shouting into the ether. Nobody's listening to me. And then after a while, it just started growing up super fast and I couldn't make sense of that. And so now it's a useful thing to get story ideas, a useful thing to engage with my audiences, a useful thing to get feedback. And I just wrote something for the BBC and I got one of my favorite um, comments back from a reader who said, this is an imbecilic piece of, imbecilic piece of tribe ever written. And I was just like, so kind of you. I personally am impressed that your followers have such extensive vocabularies. So, uh, frankly, I find it uh, <laughs> <laughs> noteworthy. All right, you, but really, I think what people want to know, what journalists want to know is, do you have this massive following because you are on the BBC? Or did your massive following build organically uh, and then the, your journalistic presence supported that? helped build it further it's when people were starting media outlets around the world journalists were starting to bring people in on facebook and on twitter especially and show them these are the questions i needed or i was looking to speak to this person so just as these platforms were starting to blow up i was also kind of testing my feet there and trying to get a sense of them and i think that helped a lot of people understand how the news was made why we interviewed the guests that we did or also to call, call me out when they think I didn't do a good job in story or an interview and say, you should do better, you should think of this person. So I do think that aspect of transparency is really useful for readers, particularly as we look at the decline in trust in news and overall. Um, but you know, one of the things I'm constantly hearing is that, that there's this tension between whether or not a journalist should remain neutral on social platforms, that idea of journalistic uh, neutrality, or whether or not they should have a voice, have an opinion. What do you think? So that's a complicated one. One of the things the BBC is very clear on, and being a public broadcaster more than maybe any other commercial outlets, especially here in the United States, is that as BBC journalists, we're not allowed to have opinions on social media because anything that might cause the audience to question the BBC's impartiality is a no-no. And it's our whole social media policy, but the guidance is usually summarized into one phrase, don't be stupid, which is simple enough. And in the political circle, people especially- People use that on social media, really, <laughs> is that single it's phrase. It's useful advice, yeah. It's good advice. <laughs> it's useful so, advice, not just for political reporters or journalists as a whole, but anybody else who's tweeting, um, just don't be stupid. And what I find, especially within American and uh, European um, Twitter circles and social media circles, is we are also opinionated, even as reporters, and you want to weigh in on every twist and turn. And it's very navel gazy in a way, and I think it does a disservice to audiences. Twitter, Facebook, these can be incredibly dark places. I mean, they can be politically fraught, they can be uh, cesspools of misinformation, disinformation. How do you personally cope with those, I mean, your presence is strong, how do you deal with it? I'm always careful not to do anything just for the sake of it or because all my colleagues are doing it, so I, it, it truly must be, it must be the right thing to do. I'm very judicious about why am I tweeting this to what end? Am I trying to inform people? Am I trying to self-promote? And let's face it, we're, we all have a certain degree of self-promotion on social media. We become journalists because we think we are awesome people <laughs> and... No you judgment. can't avoid it. But yes, no judgment. <laughs> but I, I think because I realize that I have such great power and my voice reaches so far, I have to be careful with what I do. Do I always get it right 100% of the time? Absolutely not. Are there tweets I've tweeted and I look back and say, what, am I, what was I thinking? That was so stupid. Yes. Are there times when you just have to turn it off? 
I take a, a month of social media every year. I delete the apps, I sign out of the accounts, I don't get any notifications. And for me, it's a moment of self-care, it's a point to detox and to, you know, get a sense of Twitter is not real world. Facebook is not the, the real world. And you get out of that echo chamber and into the real world for a moment. But really, I mean, I couldn't agree more, but for journalists, you know, those starting out, how important is having a social media presence? And what does that take in terms of being present and engaging and interacting? I have colleagues who are starting out as reporters who don't have social media and I don't understand how they do their job, honestly. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just significantly harder because it's not just uh, a way for you to keep abreast of the news and topics and what people are talking about. It's a way for you to find sources. It's a way for you to kind of do some intelligence and understand what what do people care about and who are the main opinion shapers in this subject. So if you're a reporter starting out, I highly recommend usually to get social media. You don't have to tweet anything, but just be out there and listen and lurk in there and see what other senior colleagues are doing, see what the, the area that you're interested in. You can curate a list of these are the people I want to cover, these are the people I'm, um, I hope to be speaking to, and what are the current thoughts and the issues in my beat. I think that's just essential. The thing is, uh, while you might encourage them to jump on there and lurk, the, the immediate drive, it's the way social media is built, is to grow those followers, right? So for you, I mean, you built a following, you said, before you had a, a highly visual journalistic presence. What's your advice for building a following? I think I don't have a simple magic wand that you do this and you're going to get a big following overnight. I don't think it happens unless you already are huge so that on the day you join social media, half a, half a million people follow you. For most of us, that will never happen. But if you curate your feeds to the people you're interested in, interested in, the topics that you write about, and you bring people along and you show how the sausage is made, but also what you're passionate about these issues, and you engage with the people in that space, over time people will begin to follow you, especially if you're insightful and you do good work and they already follow you from your platform on the newspaper or on TV or radio, then I think that naturally lends itself to building that credibility and building that following on social media. So how about the, the idea of the personal brand? I'm seeing more and more journalists, I'm sure you are as well, who are taking their brand and monetizing it outside traditional channels. They're not working for the BBC. They're, they're setting up their own newsletter or, or maybe it's just a really robust freelance career. How important is social media for that personal brand? I think that's a new avenue that we didn't think about. I didn't learn about suddenly when I went to journalism school. And it's great that we can build this personal brand using the existing platforms and someday think that maybe it's time for me to start my own newsletter or my YouTube show and I can get enough eyeballs onto it. And it's a way to be independent in some, in, in some places, in some countries where you don't have the same independence because of the ownership or control you can have this truly independent space that advertisers supported or even better, that's reader supported by the audiences who are paying because they, con- they value your voice and they want it to remain independent and to speak for them. So when, when we're thinking about personal brand again, uh, and when you're thinking about success, right, what success looks like on social media, is follower counts the real measure? Follower counts is the worst measure of success on social media. I think if you're using your platform to amplify your work, to reach out to the right people, and to gain some credibility in your beat or in your area as a reporter, even if you just have 300 followers, that's much more useful than my 1.8 million if I'm just using it for self-promotion. It's self-serving, and that's pointless. So I think we should uh, definitely ask you for your advice, the the advice you would give a young journalist looking uh, to build that personal brand, looking to build that social success, or even more importantly, how they should leverage social to be more successful as a journalist. So all of us in this age have to build some kind of personal brand. Editors are looking for people who already have some kind of follow on social, right? Whether you're going to be a print reporter, you're going to be at a digital outlet or on television. So don't feel shy. I'm like, oh, I'm a real journalist. I don't want to self-promote. Some degree of self-promotion is useful, and social media is one way to do that. However, 
I highly recommend that people um, engage in this space. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You're watching Collision From Home.